Can we talk using our hands with sign language? No. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well said, Regan. That is a crazy shirt. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah Regan. Oh, man, don't say the N-word, Regan. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You see Nazgul? the... Nazgul? The, the, oh, Nazgul? <laughs> anyway, the joke, is, the joke is we're in the same room. Uh, and this is uh, Why is Shit So Kawaii? Starring Maxwell and Kit with special guest R- R- Regan. Yes. Uh, hi guys. I'm Regan, the international man of history. Yeah. I'm giving a thumbs up. We don't have a camera. That it means help. that means you're a man of history within the nation. Within the nation, yes. Oh. It's uh, my way of making fun of my inability to do anything with my degree. Oh. <laughs> uh, everybody else gave sort of their background. You guys are working towards degrees, and I. Uh, finished my useless masters of history so yeah so so for a, a little little bit additional background uh regan's my friend from undergrad uh back when i was going to like a better school than i go to now uh well we, we were we were anime fans we were part of the anime club there and so i don't, I know, I don't like how you bite into that word uh, <laughs> so uh so i brought regan on the show to review eventually Beyond the Boundaries, Chamya Nyokinata. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. So, so, some moon speak, I don't... Yeah. So what's up with you guys? What's up with you guys? Um, well, I'm back in Louisiana. Yeah. Really, as yeah. I'm sitting on your couch right now. You return to the dirty, dirty south. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, basically, that's that's what I'm doing. A yeah. whole lot of nothing. Yeah, yeah. We've been hanging out a lot. Yeah. Uh... Watching, we watched all of Korra last night. Uh, that exists. Well, all, all the four seasons. All the four. Let's seasons. clear that up before people quickly <laughs> cringe as Regan has done. Yeah, yeah. Re- <laughs> Regan doesn't even like Legend of Korra because he's he's a, he's a, a scowling bitch. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is a, a very common trait. I'm often called uh, man, a man without joy who loves nothing, uh, especially with regards to uh, good things. <laughs> Anime and film. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. You got a master's in history. We all know you don't have taste. Ooh. Ew. It's uh, okay. I'm an English major. Right? Yeah, it's okay. My my runner up was philosophy, so I, I think I think I'm beating you. Remember, remember when we were like in our third year, and you were like, "Man, my dad says I should probably get an economics degree." I was like, and you you asked me, "Do you think I should do that?" And I said, "Probably," and then you didn't listen to me. Sam, <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> so yeah, what have you been up to? Uh, well, uh, I've been uh, working for the government for nearly minimum wage. Mm. Uh, that's been awesome. Are, are the benefits any good at least? They are if I choose to use them, which I don't because I'm on a better health care plan at the moment. So. Oh, all right. Uh, yeah, until I turn a certain age, I can use my parents, so. Oh, sure. damn, I care. Uh, <laughs> thumbs up on that. Yeah. You put uh, damn in Obama's name. I know, it's funny. To, show you, to show your distaste for him. <laughs> it's almost as if I don't have to, like, get on my own health care for a while. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. Full-time students. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as anime goes, I've been... Desperately avoiding the wave of uh, current shonen like Attack on Titan and Hunter x Hunter. Oh man, fuck you, Hunter x Hunter. It says current shonen as if like yeah, yeah. Hunter x Hunter is something new. Yeah, it's uh, been around forever. Eh? Well, and two I, is one of the greatest works of fiction. I, I, ever I classify it so that people know what I mean when I say modern. Like for the last four or so years. All right, right, right. I'm just saying Hunter x Hunter is like. Pretty much for me, like War and Peace, the Iliad Hunter. Oh, I, I listened to the podcast. Yeah, I, yeah. I got that. <laughs> Wait, someone listens to the podcast? That's <laughs> not a real thing. Shit. So don't, don't fucking bullshit a bullshitter, Regan. <laughs> when I was listening to episode fucking five. Uh, if you listen to episode five, what was it on? You, uh, level E, you barely All talked right. about it. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> You, when Pat cut out, you guys were talking about uh, Hunter x Hunter and how great it was. Yeah. And it 
was probably the only thing that built towards the ending theme of the the whole running rhetoric of level E, which was it you compared it to classical literature. Yeah. And then by the end you compared level E to Ulysses. <laughs> Yeah. And then instead said it was anime, or it was the, uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking. It's the Shaq Soda of anime. Yeah, the Shaq Soda of anime. I'm like, yeah. uh, Aaron Carter, why am I triggering on Aaron Carter? <laughs> <laughs> well, we were right. Have you never had Shaq Soda? Like, it's, it was really a natural progression. I, I, I am Shaq white Soda. from the north. I didn't know Shaq Soda was a thing until the first time I listened to that podcast. <laughs> Who awakened you? <laughs> <laughs> Out of this podcast, we're getting Shaq Soda, and then doing a podcast on how great Shaq Soda is. Yeah. Right? Oh man, we could totally do a why shit so aside on Shaq Soda because there's a, there's a CVS, they have Shaq Soda, uh, they have uh, 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 lozenges, which Regan clearly needs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then then he could have a nice clear voice for our conversation about Shaq Soda, rather than Beyond the Boundary, which doesn't deserve it. No. I Oh gosh. <laughs> Where to start? <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. I mean we we can we can uncharacteristically launch into our discussion of this anime. I have a sides. Well, and and I I was told that you can't have have bullshit. I have tons of bullshit to talk about and really bad jokes to make about like at first I was going to act as if we were watching Kill a Kill. And I was like, yeah, that girl with the big red sword, and she has to, like, fight people. That that would have been a clever bit. Yeah. And, like, instead it was not KLK, but KNK. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, and then I would have said, okay, well, at least we're watching Steven Universe, where there's all these fucked up gym monsters, and, like, humanity has to deal with it. But then, like, I don't know how much play I would get out of that. No, uh, yeah. Uh, Steven Universe is real good, though. Yeah, should have done that one. <laughs> <laughs> If I can just really quickly uh, frame my particular uh, anime predilection so that any viewers who care know. Uh, yeah. Generally, I've found that you two are a little heavier on the uh, the shonen and the veering away from needless harem and trite romances. I love the sappier, dumber, absolutely ridiculous shit. My all-time favorite anime is Tenshi Muyo. Uh, followed by uh, Tenchi in Space. <laughs> it's a very close competition. Uh, and then finally, uh, Love Hina to form the trifecta. And when I say this in public, I usually get slapped as Max has just done. <laughs> yeah, we, we, cut it, we cut out it in post because it made the... Anyway, anyway. It, it, the, the levels jumped. It wasn't great. Because um, I hit him... Hit him real hard. It hurt. <laughs> I don't sit straight for days. <laughs> I slapped him on the ass. No, no, anyways, no, 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 just yeah. bent. Oh, all right. I watched I watched Lovina when I was in like eighth grade. What? Yeah, yeah. I watch it every uh, eight months. Jesus so. <laughs> fucking Christ! We should we should we should have had you on because I think in an upcoming episode we're going to do what was that called? Miracle Sam? Oh God! <laughs> yeah, I, I think we want our friend Eric on for that one. Uh, I, I think he is more able to like understand and like interpret the nuances of that. But I, I certainly think you you Regan would enjoy that more mm -hmm. than even perhaps this show. <laughs> um, but. <laughs> Because you hated it, I, I I thought it was flawed. Uh, not the worst thing I've ever seen. I, so I I recommended we watch this show this week. Yeah. Uh, uh, because specifically uh, when I started doing an anime review show, uh, everyone who talked to me about it was like, "Hey, do you listen to Demo Kun or whatever <laughs> that guy's name is?" And he was like, and "So I listened to all that guy's anime reviews, mm -hmm. and one of them was on this show." I was like, "Oh, that's pretty animation," and he kind of liked it. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, and that's why we we watched this thing. Oh well, I mean, I'd heard about it before. Is the true? This is is this a Kyoto Animation show? Kyo Annie. Uh, I usually I believe, have stuff okay, so in front of me. They usually do moe as shit shows. Yes, and <coughs> so uh, they did like Chunibyo before this, and, like free. Um, yeah. But before that, like they were known for doing even more moe bullshit. Yeah, and you, you definitely see the traces of that. Yeah. Yeah, and so the idea was, well, everybody freaked out first whenever they did free because they're like, no, 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 you can't tap into the Fujoshi market. You shouldn't start making like anime for women. You should keep making moe things for us, disgruntled basement dwelling men. Yeah. 
But then, um, then they made this show, and this is like a kind of, I think, progression out of uh, doing Chinavio, and that there was some action in this. Yeah. So I, what I I think I think that's probably accurate. And I will note, so like, so I've been watching. So I, I actually kind of like Chunibyo. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 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 real fucking goof. Yeah, I think it's kawaii. It's goof. It's real goof. Uh, but I think it's funny, and I I, I think it. I like the themes of like uh, escapism, and like uh, loving cheesy bullshit essentially. Yeah. <clears throat> but what's great about it, and also I've been watching. Um, uh, 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 when supernatural battles have become okay. commonplace, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which I also has Chun, Chuni Bio themes, but couched in uh, a plot where people actually have magical superpowers. Right. Uh, it's just then they don't do anything. But I think we should watch that later, by the way. But uh, I don't actually like the supernatural action genre that much, so I don't mm-hmm. have a lot of uh, context for those shows and the things they're they're making fun of and really celebrating. Uh, and this is one of those. <laughs> this, yeah. this is the Chuni Bio shit that they're talking about. Where it's all, yeah, like, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it it feels to me like it was two fifteen year olds sat down to write an anime. Like I know it's not the case because it's probably based off of a light novel because all anime are based off of light novels, or at least it seems that way at times. Uh, but like you had the one kid who was like. I'm going to have this, like, super action-focused, like, spiritual battler thing. (laughs) And the other guy was like, I'm going to have a wacky, like, high-stakes comedy slice-of-life thing, which is why we have episode six at all. High-stakes episode six. Which was episode six? The Uh, best episode? (laughs) The what? The idol episode. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. For those of you who haven't seen the anime, uh, the basic <laughs> premise is they hunt demons. Uh, our main character is a half demon who has allegedly no powers, uh, just immortality, and his love interest is a girl who can turn her blood into a sword from a small pin pick or pin prick she has on her hand that doesn't heal, uh, and they hunt monsters together. Uh, and the idol episode, there is a monster that vomits. An insane amount of horrible smelling uh, mucus hanging out on top of the school, and they have to beat it by like flashing titties at it. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> so, my favorite thing about that episode, and, and here's the real preface, here's the real thing that I wanted to tell you that's going to flavor, I assume, a lot of this podcast this today. Alright. So, the other day, whenever you said, Hey, kid, are you done with the show? Uh-huh. I said, Oh, yeah, I have a few episodes right. left. And by that I meant all of the episodes. <laughs> yeah. And so I thought originally that we were going to record at uh, 4 p.m. the other day. And it was 3 p.m. And, <laughs> and I thought, man, how am I going to watch all 12 of these episodes within an hour's time? And so then I noticed there's a button to speed things up. So I watched the episodes at times 8 speed. It's probably the good way to do it. And I watched every single episode at times 8 speed. <laughs> so... <laughs> If you guys talk Kit. about the music or the characters' voices, Kit. fuck that noise. Kit, you, you can't fucking do this. <laughs> I didn't know that we were going to do this. Until today. Well, well, you fucking found out eventually. <laughs> yeah, that, oh, means you, that means you would have fucking had a chance to watch all of it. Yeah, that's whenever I went back and watched the first one and like the, the last, last one, one in normal speed. Right. And like the ones I liked, like the uh, the episode episode six. Hey. And speaking of episode six, I enjoyed it because it was ridiculous shenanigans. <laughs> Yeah, and it tied into like nothing else other than premise of them fighting demons. No, yeah, it, it sort of felt like it was trying to do that Code Gaius thing, where it's, we have we have yeah. like a very serious drama, and then every now and again we'll have the wacky school episode. <laughs> but the problem was about half the episodes are wacky school, and they like maybe yeah. it's just me. Apart from the first episode where they actually contextualize them being in class. Was not the point of them being students completely arbitrary? Yeah, I, I, I think that's essentially true. But like listen, more man, so than a regular anime. I know. No, <laughs> not more so than a regular <laughs> anime. Well, the, yeah, the maybe I got a little too ambitious with that last point. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> animes animes are about kids in school. I don't I don't know if you knew about that, Regan. Yeah. But they're about kids in school. Um. But but. <laughs> 
Watch Tension there, you know? Love Hina. Love Hina. Uh, Love Hina is Tension entirely in space about has nothing to do with... No, the point of Love Hina is that they're not in school. No, he's, he's applying to go to Tokyo U, right? Todai U. Oh, okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. 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 I, you know, <laughs> I, as much as I like Negama, which is an embarrassingly oh, large Christ. amount, I've never actually consumed any Love Hina in my life. Uh, though I, I am reading uh, that guy's newest thing with uh, Up Q Holder. Yeah, I've I've heard a lot of, or rather, I've heard Q-Q. nothing about it other than that it's coming out, and secretly wanted a good opinion before I touched it. Oh, I actually really enjoy it. <clears throat> it it's it's way less uh, bullshit than it, it, it's like it's like late cycle Negima more than okay. early cycle Negima. <laughs> early Negi. Is, yeah. Oh. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> they go to school on this show. And uh, I think I'm fine with that, but maybe because I watched the majority of the school stuff in Times 8 Speed. And, <laughs> uh, so I was like, oh, cool, yeah, they get, they're in class, the chick drops her head on the table, they fight some dudes in classes, it's all G and H. Um, <laughs> but I like the Idol episode because they got totally carried away with doing the Idol bullshit, and they never killed a monster, or at least as far as I'm aware. Yeah, presumably... Like, I mean, the Idol episode is my, my problem why they're at school, because presumably they can all just take a week off, because they smell terrible, to do a training montage and nobody cares. Yeah, Japan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can totally get away with missing a week of school without your parents just beating you in Japan. Well, this is... This like, is no one, no one has any parents. Yeah, their parents yeah. are all dead. Yeah. Uh, are, are, like, are strippers, or whatever yeah. your main character's mom is. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ, that character. <laughs> but Izumi watches over uh, the rest of the Nase clan, so she... she There's no way she's not down for just beating her sister and younger brother. I mean, probably. Within an inch of their lives. Probably, but, they're, but they, they're, they're, they're skipping school to hunt, hunt demon. Yeah, it's yeah. worth a lot of money. Yeah. And if she doesn't make the money, she can't pay hey, rent. rent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so it all makes sense that no one has parents; they can get away with it. Uh, what, what was I gonna? Oh, earlier you were talking about how the show has a tone problem, and I absolutely agree because mm-hmm. it's half the time wacky, goofy hijinks, uh, which I don't love. Uh, but, with an exception, I really enjoyed the first episode of this anime. Yeah. yeah. I thought the premise of... I thought it was going to be like some kind of fucking Wile E. Coyote shit. Where this was just going to be like an anime about a uh, blood sword girl uh, repeatedly he, finding he, ways to, to kill. Try, try to kill some mortal guy. Yeah, like trying to get out of wacky situations. Like whatever that uh, <clears throat> Doki Doki angel beat or whatever the fuck it is. With the uh, little girl <laughs> angel from the future and the yep. big spiky club. That 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 sounds like Angel Beats. What? <laughs> no. You know, Doki Doki Angel Beats. No. <laughs> Hold I, on, I'll find it. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> that, that shit. That shit's real anime, uh, Regan. Uh, 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 <laughs> attentive listeners may realize that I rarely remember anything. Uh, so I'm. There's probably like three guys listening who know the anime I'm talking about. Are like, God, you're being such an idiot. So give me a second. Here. <laughs> there might be three guys listening to this podcast. <laughs> Us. Yeah, yeah. And once you look it up, we will have all known about it. Yeah, so that, that that is true. Uh, Excel Saga. No. <laughs> <laughs> we watched it in Anime Club back at Tulane. Did we watch? Bludgeoning Did we... Angel Dokuro Chan. Oh. oh, yeah. That's that's neither of those. This things. one. Oh, I I don't know shit about that. Oh, yeah. I I ain't about that life. Um, but but I think you you did bring up something that was uh, on point. You're comparing it to Code Gaius and how Code Gaius tried to do those things. Mm-hmm. But here's the thing about Code Gaius: it's like a, it's it was like good. It's like 24 episodes long in the first season. Yeah. Right? You can have like three joke episodes <coughs> in a 24 episode uh, season. Arguably, you need it with something that's sort of bleak. As Code Gaius. I don't know if Code Gaius is bleak. Like, it, it's not Co- like... Code, this... Ga- Co- Code Gaius has, like, a t-shirt that says bleak on it. But... Well, <laughs> <laughs> but... With, with something taking itself so seriously yeah. and... I don't know, that slick back, eyeliner, high school level serious. I'm just saying... I'm just saying, <laughs> when I'm watching, like... like Plan 5 from Outer Space or whatever, I'm like... Man, these guys just need to slow it down and just have some levity. <laughs> right? <laughs> and I like Code Guys, but that shit's goof. 
That that shit is it's just not combining. Meant to be. It's, I, listen, I know. <laughs> but that show is four animes. It's four yeah. different animes. There's Pokemon one anime. And that's fine. It's watchable. There are four animes in that anime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's uh, stuff to look at, but yeah, yeah. So there can't there can't be a universe where ridiculous shit happens and then there's monsters like there can. our universe our, what oh yeah you know that's my true. life is ridiculous and then there's monsters <laughs> yeah yeah you do have that trouble with clowns <laughs> kill it <laughs> Oh man! And the reality of our radio program—a clown monster walked in. <laughs> that shit was creepy. Guys. I'm glad we scared it away, and now we can continue our anime podcast. But yeah, yeah, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't bother me so much. But again, look, every time I say it didn't bother me so much, yeah, times ain't speed. So, so if I ever had to deal with people being ridiculous and silly. It was for a minute instead of, like, Kit, eight minutes. Kit, I'm, like, really disappointed <laughs> about how you handled it this week. Oh. You had a lot of notice to watch this. <laughs> like, I, I'm actually pretty proud, because, uh, to be honest, you told me that it, uh, we, we would start recording anywhere, like, after the at, at or after the 8th. And so I waited precisely till I woke up on the 8th to even start watching any of it. Yeah. So I can really empathize with Kit right now. Because <laughs> I read the description on Crunchyroll, which is how I watched it, and it nearly killed me. Yeah? Holy what, shit. What was the description, exactly? <laughs> Give me a second. I'm going I'm to read it verbatim. Yeah? Okay. There is a girl who is the last surviving member of a certain clan, in quotes... And a half Yomu, in quotes, boy who shouldn't exist. Ellipses, this is their story. Okay. Which is like how someone in an anime would like preface the show <laughs> and provides no detail. Well, fucking Crunchyroll is just a bunch of fucking weebs. No, I understand. Uh, so, so they're going to preface anything as though they were in an anime. It's just like. It doesn't even read like the back of a box. It, I, it tells you literally nothing about that. I'm surprised that they didn't end the sentence in deaths. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. That's oh, all I'm saying. Oh, gosh. It's far for the course. Jesus. Yeah, yeah but it's a shitty course. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's like putt-putt. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. There was, there was there were a lot of moments where I thought things would be interesting and I was only left disappointed. Like, at first I thought the guy that had the sister fetish and wore scarves all the time... I thought he would just be a normal fucking weird dude. And that yeah. he would never have any powers, and he would just be that weird dude that main character, like, sees his humanity in. You know? Because <laughs> they both have stupid fetishes. And yeah. they're both weird. <laughs> no, and I, I had thought for a long time that perhaps that was part of the Yomu's character, the demon boy, was that he was seeing this weird perv in his class, the <laughs> senpai figure, and was attempting to emulate him. Yeah. Because, of course, he was raised in a society... Where he was a monster. You motherfuckers weren't paying attention. That guy that guy <laughs> was clearly Superpower McGee from episode one. Yeah, he was. Which <laughs> yeah. was really unfortunate. <laughs> yeah. No, like, I, I figured that out. I was just hoping that Superpower McGee wasn't going to just essentially form the Green Ranger on Yomu Boy's Power Ranger team. Oh. Yeah. Well, he did. <laughs> I don't even mean, like, the Green Ranger from Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I mean, like... The Green Ranger from Power Rangers Turbo. Where it's just like, he's in the starting cast and irrelevant. Look, I get you. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember fucking Power Rangers Turbo at all. Like, I watched that shit in Japanese. You don't even... <laughs> <laughs> it's called uh, Super Sentai. And... Yeah, it's the best. But, uh, yeah, not, right. not to derail too much. Uh, I couldn't get over... My initial problem with the uh, the inner character relationships, uh, where it just it didn't feel real mm -hmm. at any level, even for an anime. Yeah, like we just we dove headfirst into like we don't have to introduce characters because you know who they are already. 
Yeah, no, that's true. I, th- listen, none of these none of these characters really read their Stanislavski closely. Yeah, for 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 perfecting their naturalistic <laughs> acting. Uh, but I, <laughs> okay, when you say it that way, it makes me sound really pretentious. <laughs> Thanks, jackass. <laughs> what? No, how do you sound pretentious? I just like made a Stanislavski reference. No, I get it, but it's like Regan. Don't expect such highbrow things from an anime. Yeah, well, no, but listen, there are some very good anime. In fact, last week, we, we haven't quite put it up yet, we, we reviewed uh, Terror and Resonance, which actually oh. has, like, some really solid, like, oh, yeah. like, like yeah, I watched the voice first acting, of that. and, like, uh, the animation is, is, the first 20 minutes. is attractive, but but understated uh, in, in motion. Um, but... That, that's not this. That's not no, this at all. No, you, no. Yeah, uh, this is this is some fucking QAnon shit. This is this is this is just uh, fucking uh, Tomico Market with like blood swords in it. Yeah. No, yeah. that's that's exactly what, how I feel. Yeah. Um, and, and it was awkward to see like things feel more disjointed than in Trinivio, where that's literally the plot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because the comedy is from the juxtaposition with these shenanigans ass characters with the supernatural bullshit that they they think they're doing. Yeah, and the, the gravity that they try to lend the situation. But you're absolutely right. That's actually what the show is. <laughs> this show is seriously doing fucking shenanigans ass bullshit with goofy ass characters, and then expecting you to not laugh when she makes a blood sword and is real hurt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Uh. Yeah. Which, which is my... there's a point that I've I've been baking and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to continue without expressing it. I feel the romance plot of the show, like the the long line of the romance, is terrible, horrible to broken Aesop because it's literally don't like like the actual romantic candidate you have, literally making a like your own new girlfriend. What? Okay. <laughs> so. You gotta go deep in this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's sort of why I didn't want to bring it up. Uh, Make your own girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. Because we reveal that she's been dead. Yeah. In the last episode. Yeah. Yeah, skipping to the end. Yeah. She, she done died to an episode or two earlier. Yeah. And so. Instead of saying, well, this girl is dead, he uses his, uh, Yomu boy, uses his nearly deific, or, or just properly deific, would you say? <laughs> well, uh, well, he, he was beyond the boundary himself! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, there's a boundary which is the power of all Yomu, and he is beyond the boundary, which is part of why he's properly immortal. Yeah. Uh, and so he Unless just... there's a lull... What? Oh god! Yeah, like there's a whole plot point. What? Like episodes like uh, seven through whatever. Yeah. Where they're like, it's a lull. Oh, and yeah. demons are weak, and you're not immortal anymore. But yeah. And that makes no sense because the lull doesn't weaken his demon form; it weakens his human form. No, 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 no. His human form was not weakened. It was a uh, bitch older sister that like uh, evil hypnotized him that made his human part weak. Yeah, but I thought she could only do that because of the lull. No, no, no. They only did it at that time so, like, the monster part would come out and then they could kill it just as being the monster part. That, that actually had continuity. Yeah, no, I... I, that, that was, that, I, I, I misinterpreted the scene as it played before me, probably because I was hypnotized by the 19 billion Cox internet ads. Uh, for residents listening from outside the state of Louisiana, Cox is a mediocre internet provider that has more or less of a monopoly for the state of Louisiana. Still better than Time Warner. Probably. Sure. Yeah. But it, it better just... Better than Comcast, I hear. <laughs> it just... Fl- like, it's not, it's not comically shite. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but it just floods the internet with its ads. Well, you know, all, all cable companies, they're pretty much natural monopolies. Yeah. Uh, the, the, frankly, we should uh, regulate them more and just say, hey, you're just like... You have a contract with the state. You're our provider. We we, we own you, kind of. Uh, you make the money, but you listen to us. But we make the rules. Yeah. And that's a conversation for a different podcast. Well, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an economist, though. Yep. Anime uh, and economics. Make the podcast. I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah. I'll guest star. Anime uh, economics? 
Anime and economics. I can write the story and no one will buy it. <laughs> Yay! Hey! Uh, but my... Uh, Crunchyroll had a, a, a bug and I wound up in a 20 minute loop of the uh, the Cox advertisements. Uh, and I think that's totally fair to include in your review of Beyond the Boundary. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it, it, it informs our... Loyal listener, uh, the <laughs> hey Black James, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Don't watch Karna Kyokai though, because <laughs> yeah. that show sucks. Black James, <laughs> fuck Garden of Sinners. <laughs> I'm gonna say this in every podcast from now on. <laughs> uh, I watched episodes seven through twelve the first time when I had a hundred and two degree fever and was so infirm that I could not fix. The problem with Crunchyroll's video player. I <laughs> literally watched an episode worth of dumb Cox uh, adverts. The same one in a row. <laughs> you know, you know what I, you know what I think. I think that sucks, Cox. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Wordplay. Oh. Uh, yeah, we, we we rarely have wordplay on the show. Yeah, yeah. We, we should a little, we little should, quicker. We should do more. It's because China banned it. Yeah, it's true. China did ban wordplay in their media. Yeah. Did you hear about that? Yeah, and for that? the one one loyal listener, pirating yeah. from Hong Kong. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, fuck China. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I don't think the rest of anyone cares. Oh. Well, fuck China. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm just saying China is But gently, like... because we need her money. <laughs> nah. China, China's going to be in some shit pretty soon. They and some, until I... then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Housing... Housing market collapse going to happen. Anyways, let's not talk about economics <laughs> or anime podcasts anymore. It's weird that you guys keep bringing it up. Can we talk about I, the economics <laughs> of this anime? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, how it spent its time and resources? <laughs> sure. Yeah, so I thought it was really weird whenever they did the Hollow Shadow arc at the beginning. Because that felt like some in-game bullshit. But yeah, it really I, did. Here's what's, uh, here's what's got to be, and I should have done more research... But it it ha- this had to have been over the course of several light novels. Yeah, and that that, first that was the one, end of one of them. That was the end of the first one. Sounds right. Uh, yeah. Either that or it's uh, we hated <sighs> breath here. No, I think it's I think it's that point in the light novel that's sort of that early climax to show you what the stakes are. Yeah, uh, reveal that Yomu boy is dangerous. It doesn't work at episode four and a half. Whenever I try to have an early climax to reveal that I'm dangerous, it never works. Are you dangerous? <laughs> I'm trying to be. I mean, you, you often say, let's get dangerous. But that's just <laughs> you love Darkwing Duck so much. Uh, I, I never thought you meant it seriously. Oh. No. Well, I'm sorry. I, listen, next time you want to get dangerous, I'll, we'll do it. Let's get dangerous. Let us. Let's get dangerous. Uh, but, Okay, animus. <laughs> yeah, uh, climaxes. Well, yeah. because the thing is, it, it's weird. It's they, fucking weird. Yeah, and they, like, the worst part about that, uh, Formless Darkness, or whatever the hell it was called. Uh, <laughs> Hollow Shadows. Hollow Shadows, thank you. Uh, I watch it at times eight speed, and I know this shit, but I guess you got a fever. And uh, cocks. <laughs> many cocks in my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but, they, they introduce it, like, clunkily in the middle of episode four. And by episode five, they fought and resolved the whole thing. So it, it, it sort of enters at a weird time, and it's it's all before the halfway point. And the halfway point itself, episode six, is that idle episode, which you could throw anywhere. It could be literally any episode except <clears throat> nine, ten, eleven, twelve, which is all the... Well, I mean, it had to have been after that first arc, though. Because you had to have had all the characters established and their relationships and shit. But the thing is, we you could have had we never really established those relationships. We just take them for granted. They, they Listen, they're they, existent. They, yeah, like it could have easily been episode two because we've introduced every character except Sakura in episode one. Oh, and our villain, uh, who we introduced in like two episodes before the big fight down, and I still don't understand his relationship to the party. Uh, villain? Which one? The, the, Moroku? The, the, the guy with the glasses and the trench coat. Oh, yeah. Fucking, let me say something. I really like the villain in this Oh, show. sure. That, that that guy is stylish as shit. 
He uses his dumb powers to make revolvers and shoot fuckers in the face. Yeah. Um, at the end, he his super device was involved him hooking up like jumper cables to his bitch and car <laughs> to like a metal pole. Uh, she was neat. <laughs> neat, but largely service. But but what was what was his relationship to the party? Uh, he he also was possessed <coughs> by some big scary yomu, yomu and which was, apparently everyone was. And yeah, it's like, okay for our main character to be that way, but not for anybody else. I, I think everyone else, like, did it by choice, which is, like... But perfect. so did our main character. Mm, at the end, yeah. Yeah. Rather, so, like, rather is than... he not as monstrous as everyone else, though? Uh, I don't... I have no idea. I, I, I feel... I feel like there's some context to his decision, but perhaps there are also context... <laughs> like, that was the thing, is Azumi said she had a good reason, and we didn't even fucking care what it was. Yeah. We're just like, you have forever shaved our family, we cast you out. Yeah. Whereas, uh, well, he, literally our main yeah. character decides, Akihito is his name, is that I'd rather be immortal and, like, a monster than human and frail. Get inside me. Yeah. <laughs> and so he takes the demon power back. They have the opportunity to kill Beyond, uh, the, boundary. beyond the Boundary. And he says, if I kill Beyond the Boundary, I don't get to live through any injury and I will have to suffer death mm-hmm. no and so he takes the yomu it's and, like it's, it's a selfish well, reason well, it's, no dude it's an, it's an overarching character arc where he's actually a masochist we talked like it's it's <laughs> no that's that comes up early where yeah. they're yeah. like they're like you're, you're just a masochist that's why but, you enjoy but his childhood hurt. friend who decides that since he's not interested in him she'll settle for incest uh, cause that's her arc is I guess I'll go to incest. Uh, I, is that the arc? <laughs> okay, yes. sure. Like all like she she around episode four, five, and six, she starts calling the brother with the brother content uh, complex Onichan, and like by the end, she's not even worried about Akihito. She's just worried about her other older brother. She clearly has the arc where she's like, I guess I'll just. Adopt a big brother complex, to, like answer my older brother's little sister complex. Okay, I. Mi, all right, <laughs> sure. Maybe maybe that happened more than not. I, I don't. <laughs> like, I I'm, didn't see like it's, it's not. It's not something that they're like focusing on. Yeah. It's not the point of the story, but it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, let's. You know what I want to talk about? I want to talk about these fucking monsters. I don't. I want to talk but, about but these before monsters. Before we get to can I talk about how the complexes felt like a way to say, like, this is a character? Wink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, alright, so what's the main character do other than, like, you know, this immortal thing? It's like, well, he likes glasses. Yeah. No, you're, you're absolutely right. <laughs> well, that's, that's why I thought it was a facade. That's why I yeah. thought it was acting, because it served... Almost no narrative focus, except for an arbitrary reason for him to initially like the red-headed girl oh over my the god. black-haired girl. Oh yeah. my god, at the end though, the very final scene of the show, where they have the highest quality animation oh god. for like five, ten seconds. It's just her holding the glasses and about to put them on. And it's supposed to be the most fucking dramatic thing in the world. <laughs> but it's just... It's a fucking joke. And they cut they it's cut that, to black, yeah. and you can feel the main character jizzing in his goddamn pants. And yeah. it's awful, and it makes you feel disgusting. At the end of Sopranos, <laughs> when they imply that James Gandolfini jizzes all over the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, that's why it gets to black. <laughs> Every fade to black yeah. ends in jizz. jizz. Exactly. It's not really a fade, it's just the camera's hit first. <laughs> in an explosive like, way. Like a shotgun blast. <laughs> That just can be still traveling outer space in comets right now, yeah. as we speak. It is proof that there is life on other worlds. <laughs> Two other worlds. Uh. So yeah, about the monsters. The monsters. God, no. Have really varying quality, I want to say, in their designs. Yeah. Uh, I actually like the dumb bandage monster. Oh, that one was great. Yeah. I thought they were all going to be like, Horrible, weird, drawn from like old Shinto inspiration monsters. Yeah, I like the big Wookiee at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, the big Wookiee. Everyone has hairy monster men. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, because I mean, I, I they're, they're supposed to be the manifestations of all of our dark fears and despairs and everything else, so. which is real fucking black eyeliner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's 
It's a... <laughs> this real black it's, eyeliner. It's that, that one 15-year-old I keep talking about. Yeah. Uh, so you have the, the gorilla, the bandage monster, and you're like, okay, I see a strong theme. And then you have an eggplant with a with a big eye yeah. that vomits on people. You yeah. have a fat two-tailed cat. Yeah. That's some Japanese shit, though. That is some Japanese uh, shit. The two-tailed cat and, like, the nine-tailed fox, those are, like, archetypical. But we didn't have a nine-tailed fox, did we? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. no, wait, we did. We did, and they were friends. Yeah. 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 No, yeah. no, no, the two-tailed cat that I'm thinking of is the, uh, the one that belongs to, uh... Nine tailed fox. Long ta- long hair girl, the purple one, not the Her- Oh the familiar. Not oh, the, the familiar? not the oh. the model. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, called yeah. a Nico Mata. That's great. <laughs> That's wonderful. <laughs> it's called a Nico Machian. I got ya. It's uh, the other one's a QB. <laughs> oh we're not opening that. Can you be any more of a weep? <laughs> no. No, all right. And this is why you don't do more wordplay in your podcast. <laughs> no, uh, listen, I'm sticking it to China. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta contain that communism. Yeah. Domino effect. Exactly. They, if they ban puns, who's next? Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen a plate in your whole house. You have been sticking it to China. <laughs> uh, oh. It's right there. We can see it. It's yeah. behind the microphone. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Uh, yeah. But the monsters, real and even. <clears throat> I actually really like some designs. Uh, uh, fucking the end. It's so excessive. Well, it's actually, so excessive. before we move away from monsters, can I... Well, I, I, I'm still talking about monsters. Oh, okay. Dude, I'm talking about what Beyond the Boundary is, which is oh. a big fucking planet that they keep jumping up to and stabbing. No, 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 no. Beyond the Boundary is itself the Shadow Realm. The entire yeah. world they're in yeah. is beyond the boundary. Yeah. And all the horrible dead people and monsters in it are also beyond the boundary. Then, then why does it hurt beyond the boundary so much when you stab the giant other planet that you have to jump <laughs> up to? the core. Okay. Well, still, the monster's a big fucking orb <laughs> that you stab, and somehow that real fucks it up. <laughs> I guess the poison <laughs> blood shrug. I mean, if it can cut a cloud, I why mean, can't it cut a... Cause that thing's fucking huge. Like, so how much blood does this bitch have? Not enough. I'm, I posit. No, that's why she eats so much. Remember? Yeah. It's kooky. Uh, all right. <laughs> Fine. I love it. Just gave up. Like, okay. she eats ramen. Uh. <laughs> anyway, yeah. you know what I liked about the monsters? To Wait, find the no, monsters. time out. We need a timestamp. We got to cut that one. <laughs> that's uh, like forty-two minutes in. I guess. <laughs> all right. Anyway. <laughs> Um, no, talking about, talking about fucking silly monsters and fighting silly monsters. Uh, so it reminded me of what I initially liked about Bleach, where it was like, here's some people and they gotta fight fucking monsters, and there's just yeah. these fucking monsters that are gonna attack people, and it's like, now nah, that's your job, is go fight these crazy monsters. But then, like, the show didn't really go anywhere other than like, well, yeah, crazy monsters, whereas Bleach is like... Much more than that, I guess. Well, you know, you, you bring up an interesting point, uh, which is at no point ever do any of these monsters threaten innocent civilians. Yeah, it felt very Men in Black with like uh, the monsters, clean, the cleaning crew. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they were much more of we attack monsters when no one is around. Which, like, I get if you're hunting, but like monsters never openly attacked people. Mm-hmm. They just co- sort of hung around people and made them a little more miserable. Yeah. Uh, and the spirit warriors were not kind of that Shinto, like, we're cleansing people of their negative emotions sort of thing. They didn't care. There, there was, like, no morality to what they were doing, which I guess was Moroku's point. But then yeah. why did he immediately jump to destroying the entirety of the world? Oh, that's because of his fucking monster one of them, too. And he, that was but why do you contract. listen to the monster? Fucking man, I don't even know. That, that's <laughs> not, that is legitimately not explained by his character, like how he got fucking couched with this goddamn super murder demon. <laughs> no, dude, it's, it's total Call of the Void shit, where he just looked at the earth and was like, you can destroy everything. And he's like, you know, I could destroy everything. Maybe. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but don't we need more than that? Listen, uh, uh, I mean, no. maybe not from this anime. Yeah, uh, in a different show, perhaps. Yeah. 
a different show where we actually care about the villain's motivations, yes. But in this, he's just big bad guy. He has he, Satan. Satan is in his heart that makes him make revolvers and big dumb gun stabs. Well, and that was the thing with the gun staff is I thought for a long time with the gun staff because uh, there's a there's a chainsaw javelin that shoots bullets. Uh, and they make it stronger by feeding it the heart stones of the demons. Yeah. Uh, and I had thought for a long time that that was just a thing that happened in the universe, and that's why people were willing to pay for the demon stones. Because you combine them with items, and they leveled up. And I was like, I get it, RPG or MMO mechanics. Yeah. Makes sense. Clear. Let's go. I got ya. I'm with you, anime. But then when we reveal that it does that, everyone is shocked yeah. and, like, horrified that such a thing exists. You know, you raise a good point. That that could have actually been a really solid bit of world building. Because I don't, I don't know what people are just generally doing with these motherfucking things. Presumably nothing. Yeah. Because defeating the Yoda doesn't even kill them. gemstones in real life, though? They're decorative, but these aren't gemstones. <laughs> these are, like, ugly earth rocks with... Like, bits of shit sticking out of them. <laughs> the more valuable ones are just jet black chunks of, like, pavement. True. Yeah. Kind of. Kind of true. Like, the more valuable the gem is to the spirit warriors, the less it looks like an actual gem. There, you know, there's a heavily implied market somewhere. They have to be using these fucking things for something. Something. Be- yeah. because, because, because it's all fetishistic. I gotta figure. Because they're so tight with the prices. Yeah. They're... Because, like, oh, because that eggplant thing isn't worth a lot of money because it's fucking dangerous. It's no. worth a lot of money because it's a fucking pain in the ass to get. But there's clearly a supply constraint. That means there has to be demand. A use for its jet. Yes. When I said talking about the economics of the anime, this is not exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> well, because, again, uh, that's another thing I thought was going to be world building. Uh, at the early half of the episodes, uh, there's a running gag that the spirit stones are not worth what the group thought they were. And I thought that would either lead to the fact that the Yoma was cheating them, uh, that perhaps uh, the coming of the Beyond the Boundary led to an increase in Yomu, and therefore there, there was a saturation of that market. No, they were just gathering shitty Yomu stones. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, like, there were so many easy opportunities for world building that we just sort of Walked past and didn't look back. Yeah. Well, you know, they 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 certainly didn't see them. I, 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 the two fifteen year olds yeah, writing the, two, the, the two fifteen year olds writing it. They, they didn't know. So. I l- listen, man. Not everyone is as smart as we are, and that's really sad. If that were I, listen, man. <laughs> if everyone was as smart as we are, everyone would be doing anime review podcasts. No, no. I, uh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Uh, but we're special. Yeah. We're special because we review animes on the internet, and like then a billion other people. and then like ten people listen to it. <laughs> yeah, that's what marks us yeah. as the elite. Yeah, we're cut above. The, the fact that nobody listens to us means we know what we're talking about. That's true. <laughs> we're, we're underground, we're doing <laughs> deep cuts. But anyways, I have nothing terribly interesting to say about this anime anymore. I I, I thought it was fucking goofy. I thought it was overwrought when it was not being goofy. Uh, and I feel like it was excessive. Uh, uh, shit was too anime for me, Kit. I, I, I have one thing more uh, before I just... Because if, if we need to keep going, I have more to say. Good. But, yeah. Say uh, it. Say it. Yeah. I'm not going to pull back the veil and reveal my horrible... Like anime form underneath. I will say, uh, our main character Mirai has. Uh, she would always say that uh, something was unacceptable or yeah, yeah. unpleasant. Unpleasant. That was yeah. it. Uh, In our translation, anyway. she says it like a billion times to the point where, like, by the end, it's like her wacky catchphrase. Yeah, that is not a catchphrase. That's unpleasant. Yeah, like that's not a that's not a thing. Yeah. Now she to was, the point where like she says it and everyone like in universe laughs. They're like, that means everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, shit's pretty try hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just try. You know what? I didn't. 
I didn't hate it, though. My brain hates it. My brain hates it. <laughs> but when I was sitting there, I was like, oh, man. Look at these cute anime girls. Look at these dumb, stupid sword fights. Uh, look at them do a sweet jump with this fucking... What was that at the end? Uh, like a motorcycle? Was it a motorcycle or was it a, a scooter? Uh, it was a scooter. A motorcycle would have been too cool. It would have been too rad. Yeah, too realistic as to how they made a 40-foot gap. Yeah. Well, it's in it's in Beyond the Boundary. Yeah, where, no, where, exactly. The rules don't apply. physics. Yeah. Or I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to talk about the part where he takes off on a... Uh, on a motorcycle, and she just casually runs up behind him and jumps onto the front of the handlebars. Uh, no, no, we're not gonna. No, no, that, no that's, 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 that. I don't even feel like that warrants mentioning. We, have, we <laughs> have a whiteboard that says everything we're not going to talk about in this episode, and it's right there. Yeah. And... Sorry, I should have read <laughs> it. I just thought it was worth bringing up because why would they need the motorcycle if they can? Well, he can't. He that's, can't go that. Well, we've proven in other episodes agenda. that he can outrun her. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, you know, it's anime bullshit, and I think that this is anime bullshit, and I loved the anime bullshit that this was yeah. at times. I mean, that's, so, that's fair. So, I think the difference is that I embrace this fully as anime bullshit, which is why I loved episode six more than anything, because it was the most anime bullshit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I feel episode one, six, and a little bit in the middle of twelve had probably the strongest artistic visions, yeah. which is why I say there were two teenagers writing it. One who started, like, they both made a pilot, right? Yeah. And what, one, what one pilot what? was episode one, one pilot was episode six, <laughs> and every other episode was, like, a compromise of the two artists. Fucking episode one and episode six are the same show. They're the same show. I, I, you gotta talk about episode two and episode six for the pilots. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Um, maybe. So, so the interesting shit is I actually watched the first couple episodes of this when it was airing. Right. Um, before I dropped it around like four. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's where I'd give up. Yeah. And so whenever I was watching this when it was airing, there was a lot of hype when episode one came out. And everybody was like, this shit is the bomb.com. Yeah. And then the other episodes proceeded to come out. <laughs> so, I think episode one's really promising to me for... We mentioned earlier <coughs> we this conception of the, you know, like, the chick chasing around the main character, like, trying to kill him and stuff, and he's immortal and that's wacky. Yeah. Some fucking Red Runner bullshit, yeah. Wile E. Coyote. Uh, which is hilarious. Yeah. But I also thought that the idea of, like, this chick with a really ridiculously balls-to-the-wall OP ability... But who was also inept as shit. Yeah. It's like she has like buckets thrown on her head and <laughs> shit like that. I thought that was goofy and fun. I, you know what? I think you're you're exactly correct. That, I I agree. If, if I'm going to talk about positive parts of this anime, that is definitely one of, that that she's she's such a, a fucking action girl anime trope character. That's also so a, a clumsy it hurts, it's clumsy moe girl. <laughs> that's an interesting execution of a character. Uh, well, what? Oh, but it doesn't. Yeah. She's the the reveal is that she's hired by Izumi to kill Akihito, right? Yeah. So why would you hire someone so clearly enough? She can't even find the stupid. Because she's, like, she's the only one with the cursed blood that can actually reliably kill this monster thing. So like, keep her under your protection. Don't tell your sister to keep him or her away from Akihito. Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so. Well, I mean, I mean that's that's so like she doesn't get attached to him. It, it, that wasn't for Akihito's benefit. That was for her benefit. Uh, but no, regardless, that, yeah, what? What? Because it it wasn't. But why come at it that way then? Why be like keep Akihito away from the girl that's trying to kill him? Yeah. Instead of being like, hey, don't ever talk to Akihito. He has mind control powers. Lied to her? Like, she's already lying to her. About what? Like, everything. She's she's misleading her entire clan about how she's demon-possessed. She's, for a good portion of the time, on board with Moroku's plan to blow everything up. Wait, what? For, for the first three episodes, like, until she realizes his plan is to actually blow everything up. Alright, yes. She's like, yeah, sure, I'll help you kill what's-his-face. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's the plan. Uh, wait, wait, wait. 
What am I going to say, though? Blah, 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 blah. Good things about the show. And that damn big girl, she's also super cool, sign, sort of. Yeah, it's evocative. It's There's evocative. a lot of really cool you're, you're ideas right. that don't go anywhere. A lot of cool ideas that don't go... Let's talk about this in relationship. So, when we were talking about this to begin with, Kit, you were telling me that a lot of people were comparing this to Kill a Kill. Yes. Uh, and I, so I was thinking about it through that, that lens, and playing them side by side. I think Kill a Kill is a much, much better show. Well, yeah. And well, also, also very, a very different show. So, but related. Uh, female, so a, 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 a female protagonist uh, well, in, a, in a role that undercuts traditional uh, utilizations of female protagonists. But she's not the protagonist. Ultimately. I know. I know. Listen, I'm going to get to that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah I, uh, like, cool sword stuff, cursed pasts, and lots and lots of anime shenanigans. Different anime shenanigans, <laughs> but regardless, lots of anime shenanigans. The difference between these two is that Kill a Kill is ironic, and it's a deconstruction uh, it's a it's a it's a it's it's a pastiche. It's a pastiche and a deconstruction and a parody. Whereas Beyond the Boundary is just an anime. <laughs> it, is, it is the thing. Yeah, yeah, uh, I so agree. It's <laughs> two fifteen-year-old boys saying, "You know, it would be a cool anime." Yeah, it's it's no thought about it. It's just using tropes we've already seen before, arranging them in this way, and then giving it to us. Uh, which is not great. It's okay. Like I, I like the moving pictures. I liked it. I liked. Pretty. I liked when the pictures moved. Kid, wasn't it pretty dope? It was. It was pretty pretty it was, dope. Kyo and they know how to animate stuff. They know how to make shit move, and they know how to give anime girls big eyes. So our hearts are all like, "Whoa, that's like a cute thing." Yeah. But all of them big eyes and then small mouths. Big eyes, the small mouths. Yeah, Moe Blobs. Moe Blobs. I, Moe, I like Moe Blobs, I guess. I, I, I don't, I don't really like them that much, but I kind of like them. Because you can't go full Grant with this shit. You can't go, exactly, because I, I, I won't go full Grant with this shit. You know me, kid. Where he's watching, like, uh, the show with the chicks with the wide faces. I don't even, <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's all I need to That's say. Yeah. <laughs> all you need to know is that much and kindergarten shows. <laughs> <laughs> Hannah Mar in kindergarten, that's a show. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah, Gynax made that, right? Yeah. That that was that I think that was the period of time where I decided to stop watching every Gynax show. <laughs> Good yeah. Call. Yeah. Because I watched the first two episodes of them and I was like, This is just Lollycon. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah. Can't get too my way. Yeah. You John Hinckley crazy. John Hinckley? <laughs> Alright. But yeah, I don't know. But I think I said everything. So do you have anything else reading? You seem you you're like roiling with like anger at this show <laughs> and that we made you watch it. <coughs> Uh, I feel like you always have something new, negative to say about Beyond the Boundary, uh, despite loving Tenchi in space. <laughs> he had a lightsaber, though. He, he did. He did have a lightsaber. Oh, hey, how about that new lightsaber with the cross guards? That's just pretty rad. And we're not cool. talking about Star Wars. I'm, yeah, yeah, we are. That's what we're doing. I'm not talking about Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, what else is what else is we gonna have to share about uh, Beyond the Boundary? Uh, yeah. I, I don't have too many more uh, big points, so I'll, I'll focus on a few little ones. Right. Uh, when it is revealed that the entirety of Murai's friendship with Akihito has been a lie. Okay. Uh, Akihito doesn't bat an eye at all. Yeah, he... he... Pretty much takes that shit in stride. <laughs> he was expecting that to be the case, but the whole reason he doesn't like the Nase clan is because their entire initial relationship with him was a lie. Yeah. I don't even think he's that angry at the Nase clan, though. So no, he that, totally I... is. He has that whole thing in the second episode where he's yeah. just like, they're my handlers, they're not my friends. Yeah. And uh, whatever her but name is. But by the is, end of the show, he, he, they're friends. They're friends by the end of the show. I mean, they're friends at the fucking start of the show. Yeah. It's just black eyeliner moment for no reason. 
Uh, no, you're right. Shit, shit's, shit's real edgy. And so if it bothered him, then it should bother him there. And I guess my point is... Nah, man, he grew as a person. He got over that shit. He actually... He... But he doesn't have an arc. He doesn't grow as a person. Uh, nah, probably not. <laughs> I, mean... no, the, I, I guess, no, you're right. He does grow. Yeah. He grows from saying, I will never uh, compliment... Or, uh, I will never... The, the opening monologue of the show is, I will never contemplate suicide because it's it's not an option for me. Yeah. To, at the end of the show, he says, death shouldn't be an option to me. And thus chooses being a monster over being a person. It's the complete, like, devolution of a character. What if we're all just monsters? Mind blown. But that's like beside the point. We're all monsters? God, I thought I was the only one. Because I'm a fucking werewolf. <laughs> I, uh, I'm an English major. Oh, shit. Nice to meet you. I'm shit, just white. So you can't eat. <laughs> white people found all the best sides. So up here. We value human rights first. Yeah. 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 All right. But yeah. I, I think we're out of I, I think we're out of major points, um, right? I, I mean, it's one. It, it's weird. Uh, all the school episodes, the girls talk about how the boys are perverts who just want to look at big chests. Yeah, but the anime itself is so obsessed with legs <laughs> that it bothered me. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's actually super fascinating. That could, that could be a disjoint between the dialogue of the light novels and the actual fetishes of the animators. <laughs> and that could be the case. And this is sort of that, that wallpaper over the, the, the deep recesses of my animu pe- peeling back where I'm just like, you can't have that disjoint for me. Yeah. It drives me nuts. No, if we are talking about tits, we need better animated tits, Maxwell. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if she's talking about how everybody likes, like, Mirai more than her because Mirai has more cleavage, then don't make it a plot point later that Mirai has no cleavage. Okay. And instead have every shot of the girls when they're standing being low, so you see a lot of leg, have... Two scenes where you're like, Mirai, take off your stockings while we lovingly watch. <laughs> We're having this conversation. Is this real life? Look, 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 look. Max, he, fever- he feverishly watched this show with cocks in his face. <laughs> like, I watched it at times eight speed. We both noticed this, actually. <laughs> like, I'm not saying the viewer is lovingly watching. I'm saying the animators are... Like, framing yeah. it to be, like, lovingly framing it for watching. Sure. And so it's just... No, that's true. Like, uh, when she corners him in the subway and is like, you know, you should just violently and sexually take me right now. We have two shots of her crossing and uncrossing her legs. Yep. Uh, well, okay, yeah. I don't remember those. So, so, and that's, like, that's how she's broadcasting her sexuality. Well, because, and, because you know the vagina's between those. <laughs> I, I get that. Wait, 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 wait. I thought it was like... <laughs> but earlier that like episode, she's like, all guys care about are tits. But she's not then... <laughs> I, I, this is not a problem. This is not a problem. This is not a problem. This is not a real problem of person. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know, you can watch housing. It's like when Alucard starts to reveal his powers. Like there's like crazy horrible maws. Yeah, sure. It's like that, but with like anime. <laughs> what, what the fuck are we talking about? We yeah. pulling back the veil here. <laughs> it's like just a million mouths, all just spouting the tiniest things. No, that's not what vaginas are. Right? <laughs> no, no, my problems with the anime. <laughs> okay. uh, yeah. Anyway, um, so why should so kawaii? Oh, uh, because she's moe, I don't know. Because yeah, it was Because we have, a, we have a girl in a cardigan, falling, getting buckets on her head, blushing, false crying, and doing that thing with her hands where she sort of claws the air in front of her. Oh, yeah. No, no, right. Right. Th- these are the things that are kawaii about the show. <laughs> that's true. Because she's actually kawaii this time. Yeah. <laughs> not, not just ironically. No, this shit was kawaii. Yeah, she was a real kawaii. Yeah, uh... 
if I can say I have uh, one small thing. Okay. I was hoping that you'd open okay. with a uh, greetings Kawaiians so oh, that yeah. I could say Meliki Niki Maka oh. this is probably the closest thing to the Christmas episode you guys are going to do. That is true. No, we'll do another episode. Yeah, oh Christmas. shit. Do you, what, what's a good Christmas anime? Gundam War in the Pocket. Really? Have you seen it? No. Oh god. Uh, <laughs> it's not very kawaii. <laughs> it's not very kawaii. All right, well... But it's a good Christmas anime. It's just for Christmas... Well, oh, no, no, no. There's uh, one... The guy who did Love Hina made uh, an anime about... Uh, goddamn... Ken Akamatsu. Yeah, Ken Akamatsu made one about uh, a, a, a genie girl that was Santa. Falling in love with a dude. <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds like a Ken Akamatsu anime. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. it? Well, shit, maybe we should watch that. But... Yeah. But, yeah... So I hope our Kawaiians liked my, my friend Regan, because I like him. I'm okay. <laughs> you undersell yourself. You have a beard. They don't even know yeah. that. Yeah, well, now happy. they do. I know. We all have beards, though. That's not a... <laughs> it's true. It's true. We, 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 most people who have been on the show have beards. Yeah. Uh, maybe, maybe even Pat had a beard when we had him call in. Maybe. I, I like to believe he did. Yeah. I like to believe he did. Uh... But yeah, so so let's let's give our final thoughts on the show if if everyone's okay with that. Oh, um, absolutely. How, how about how about we start with you, Kit? I thought that it was a somewhat enjoyable romp where dudes fought demons, demons fought girls. You didn't have to think, and it was pretty kawaii. Ultimately, I think I give it an unpleasant <laughs> out of bleach, but uh, <laughs> you know. That's, that's, that's because my tastes are greater than just eating candy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Unpleasant Out of Bleach, that actually works on a few levels because we earlier established that Unpleasant really means everything's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's our motto. That's our motto. Uh, okay, you, you, you're you again? Uh, you gosh. Ray again? If. If somehow this conversation has convinced you guys that maybe you want to dip your toe in the water, uh, ignore your usual, I have to watch so many before I decide if I like it, rules. Just stop in the middle of an episode if you want. Uh, halfway through a line. As soon as the urge hits you to stop watching. Like, there are there are better anime in this this sort of nebulous combination of genres. That I think you can find. Uh, as I, I basically just came to the realization that this is like high school version of Card Captor Sakura. <laughs> Wait, what, 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 what's the. So, uh, okay. <coughs> yeah, no, that's, that's pretty valid, sure. Uh, like, it's not the best comparison, but it's like how you'd write Card Captor Sakura. If you wanted to target high schoolers, uh, I, I'd give it maybe a, like a C out of ten. Sure, sure. Not that, like so, like a hundred, a hundred out of ten, because of Roman numerals. <laughs> fine, fine. I thought, I thought a it was fee like... out of ten. <laughs> fine. The, I the I Greek letter C. fee, P H I. <laughs> sure. Uh, I I am gonna say that this show. Uh, you shouldn't watch this show, maybe, uh, unless you've already seen, uh, like Tomica Market. Because <laughs> then, because so if you like the show because the cute girl, just watch fucking Tomica Market. If you like the show because of the brooding bullshit, watch like fucking one of dozens brooding bullshit shows like X. If we're gonna go back to a clamp show mm -hmm. again, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, uh, or fucking anything. There's like a trillion show. Uh, what was it like? Wizard Wars came out this year. Oh yeah, that shit's garbage. But... That shit's gar. It, this is better than that, I admit. But this, <laughs> but if you wish you had this show without any cute bullshit, oh, the in school it, bullshit. Yeah, about the school bullshit and the cute bullshit. Wizard whatever wars or whatever fuck that was. Yeah, um, I still kind of liked it because I I actually do. Uh, even if guiltily enjoy Moe uh, stuff, and uh, I can, I can, and the fights were clean enough 
that they were entertaining, even if I don't usually go in for this brooding uh, uh, supernatural action show stuff. Uh, so I gave it a Tomico Market out of X. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, real, real quick side. Uh, if that whole economics uh, projection in the middle kind of wet your uh, your appetite, you clearly haven't seen Spice and Wolf. Uh, if you squint your eyes really hard, the nine-tailed fox shopkeeper from this is basically the you're fox deity. You're from saying you're saying it's the same universe. Spice and Wolf. So watch Spice and Wolf. S- same universe. You know, um, same universe. the weirdest thing about watching Blood Sea is that it's set up in the same universe as, as like, other clamp shows. Yeah? yeah? Yeah, it's real awkward. Shit, man. We, we have to watch that eventually. <laughs> <laughs> is that going to be before or after your centennial episode, which I assume is going to be Subasa? Oh, shit. <laughs> man, that would be fucking nuts. I don't know if I can handle that. But I actually kind of love Subasa. <laughs> you know, me too. Yeah, that's why you save for something special. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we already mentioned Kogias. We could connect this all and just have a clamp cast. Oh, we could. This Gius clamp? No, the the, the designs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I I, I thought they only did designs on C too, but it's the fucking same universe. Uh, They only do the designs on it, but then there's a character who's just a clamp character (laughs) who shows up. <laughs> all right, we gotta, like we, central to the park. We gotta watch that shit. I, I actually love plants. But anyway, but yeah, but all right. I, I'm I'm gonna I'm ready to sign off. Yeah, me I'm, too. I'm ready to say goodnight to our beloved Kawaiians. Aww. Yeah. And and I, I hope you enjoyed this podcast. I hope you enjoyed our previous podcast. And I hope you'll tune in again. Good night, everybody. Let's go get some shack soda. Let's get some shack soda. <laughs> oh God, no. <laughs>